what can we learn about your body and your fertility on a vaginal ultrasound? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. Today we are talking all about the vaginal ultrasound, affectionately known as WANDA because of the wand-like vaginal probe. But what information we're really looking for when we do this test, what it can and can't tell us, and what questions you should be asking if you're going in for an ultrasound evaluation. Thank you so much for all your support on the channel. Subscribe, share, like, comment. Please help us grow. This channel exists so that you can learn more about your body, health, hormones, fertility, and you guys are making it grow. So, so thankful for over 200,000 subscribers. Let's dive in and learn. Anytime you go see a fertility doctor and we say the word ultrasound, 95% of the time we're talking about a vaginal ultrasound or transvaginal ultrasound. You might see that abbreviated TVUS. Now, occasionally we do abdominal ultrasounds, namely if we're doing an embryo transfer. But outside of that, the best anatomy evaluation for the female reproductive organs is always going to be with a vaginal ultrasound. When you do the vaginal ultrasound, what we're looking for is we are looking at the uterus, we are looking at the ovaries, and we're looking at other surrounding anatomy. What we cannot always see are fallopian tubes and inside of the uterus. When you come in for an ultrasound, what to know is that if you're on your period, we can still do the exam. You definitely will want to take out any tampons or menstrual cups. Usually we have a little protective pad uh, that we can put down on the exam table. So just make sure that your team knows, hey, I'm bleeding. Make sure they don't want to change the room setup at all. When we do the vaginal ultrasound, it is a wand. It's a lot of pressure, but typically you will remain covered with a drape and you're getting real-time information from the ultrasound screen. The first thing that we evaluate with the ultrasound is typically the uterus. Now, when we look at the uterus, what we are looking at is we are looking at it in different views and we are mostly evaluating the muscular component of the uterus and the uterine lining. The uterus is a potential space, meaning in your body, it exists like this. It has two different walls and they are resting upon each other. They are not distended like we think about that triangle shaped uterus until you put something in it. So whether that something's a pregnancy or saline or water, when it is in its rest state, it is just the two walls are on top of each other. The reason why this is important is that sometimes you can have abnormalities inside the uterus that you don't see. So a great example, if I have my lipstick, this is Charlotte Tillsbury red carpet pink and it's my favorite. So here is my uterus, okay? And I've got this endometrial polyp. Now on vaginal ultrasound, you may not see the polyp. You can't tell it's here. Now, if I do an evaluation where I'm looking inside the uterus or I put saline inside the uterus or any type of liquid and I distend the uterine cavity, then you can see that the abnormality is there. Now, sometimes the abnormality is very large and you can see it, but I think it's important to know that when it comes to inside the uterus findings, if we see it on vaginal ultrasound, it's significant, it's large, we can say that's what it is. But not seeing it doesn't mean it's not there just because the uterus is not distended. We're not looking at the inside. So what we're looking at when it comes to the vaginal ultrasound is we're going to look at the muscle component. When we're looking at the muscle, what we're looking at is how thick it is. Are there any signs of uterine fibroids, which are muscular tumors inside the uterus, typically associated with heavy bleeding and painful periods? If those fibroids extend into the cavity, then they can impact fertility or if they are very large and block the fallopian tube openings. We are also looking to see if there's any signs of adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is an inflammatory condition. It's very similar as the cousin of endometriosis. If we think about endometriosis as your body's abnormal response to having menstrual cells or endometrial-like cells, and you start to have this reaction to them outside the uterus, Adenomyosis is that inside the muscular layer of the uterus called the myometrium. And we see that happen most of the time after uterine surgery where the myometrium has been cut or a pregnancy where that placenta has grown in and created a pathway. It is rare, not impossible, but rare to have adenomyosis if you've never had a pregnancy and never had uterine surgery. 
We're also looking at the structure of the uterus to see if we can rule out any uterine birth defects. Remember that the uterus actually forms as two different pieces called these horns, and they're little buds inside your body. They elongate, fuse together, and the midline portion reabsorbs, which is considered the septum. But you can have failure of fusion, partial fusion, get a heart shape, just one side form called the unicornuate. You have two totally separate sides. You have no formation at all and not have a uterus. So you can have birth defects along many different pathways, but we are looking to see if there's any clues pointing that this could be happening on the vaginal ultrasound. And we're also measuring the lining. So where these two sides come together, we have endometrium. And the endometrium is what you shed off every month when you're having a menstrual bleed. The endometrial thickness and its texture or organization can give us some information about your body. So you may not know, but this is very organized. It's called trilaminar. You can see it in the picture, which happens when you have estrogen only. So as you get to peak estrogen, you should have a nice trilaminar uterine lining. And that is what we're measuring if we're measuring the lining for transfers. After you ovulate, the lining will compact a little and it becomes what we call homogenous progesterone, compacts it, it gets a little bit blurrier. And so just looking at your lining, I can usually get a sense of what phase of your cycle that you are in. But what we always want to know is, is that consistent with what it should look like for that phase of your cycle? And if it's not, that can represent some other abnormalities. After we look at the uterus, we're going to go look at each side of the uterus. So after we look at the uterus, we're going to go look at what we can call the adnexa or where the ovary is falling. Now, remember that if I have my uterus, the fallopian tubes move around. And unlike in this picture, the ovaries are actually attached to what we call the pelvic sidewall and not connected to the fallopian tube. So you should not see a fallopian tube on vaginal ultrasound unless it's abnormal, unless it's distended or something's wrong with it. So we look in that area. Hopefully I don't see any tubular shape. If I see that, I could be concerned that it's a fallopian tube and that could be called a hydrosalpinx, which means water on the tube. It's where the fallopian tube is blocked and dilated. And that can cause a lot of pregnancy issues that needs to be dealt with. So I'm hopefully not seeing any tubal structures or abnormalities. And then I'm looking at the ovary itself. I'm looking at where it is. Does it move? If you have endometriosis or a lot of abdominal scar tissue, sometimes the ovary can get stuck back behind the uterus. So I may see that it's really far away from where I'm looking, but hopefully the ovaries move around. They're not stuck anywhere. I'm also looking at your follicle count. So how many eggs do I see? Do I see a dominant or functional follicle based on where you are in your cycle? And do I see any abnormal cysts? Remember that I like to use the analogy that every month you have a group of eggs inside the vault in your ovary. These eggs come out of the vault and the number of eggs that are outside the vault is proportional to how many remain. So an average 30 year old would have about 20 eggs outside the vault. An average 40 year old might have eight. And those are normal numbers but everybody's born with a different amount and run out at a different pace. So we want to know what this is for you. And that is called an AFC or an antral follicle count because each egg is small and microscopic, but it grows inside a fluid filled follicle. We can look and get a follicle count and get an idea if your ovarian reserve or how many eggs are inside the vault, if that is average, above average, below average, or concerning. So I'm going to get a follicle count. Depending on where you are in your cycle, I might see the one egg that is growing, and that can be a cyst. A follicular cyst is a normal functional cyst. So this is a cyst that's growing the follicle, growing the egg. And then you can have a corpus luteum, which is what that cyst looks like after ovulation. So the corpus luteum is a cyst that has reformed, and it is making now more hormones. It's making estrogen and progesterone. So do I see a cyst? Is this cyst normal, functional for your cycle? What does it look like? And then I'm going to evaluate for any abnormal cysts. So do I see any signs of endometriosis, any teratomas, which are called dermoids, and those are abnormal cysts. So anything else that's abnormal. And then I'm just looking around to see if anything else is poking out at me. But for the most part, that's the information I'm getting from a vaginal ultrasound. So questions you might want to ask is what's my uterine lining? Is that normal for where I am in my cycle? Do you see any structural abnormalities in my uterus? things like fibroids, polyps. What is my antral follicle count or AFC? Is that normal for my age? 
And do you see any cysts on my ovaries? Are my ovaries in a normal position or is there anything concerning? If you want to evaluate the internal anatomy with an ultrasound, we can add on sometimes extra exams. A saline sonogram puts a little catheter into the uterus and pushes saline into the uterine cavity. So it distends the uterus and you can watch with vaginal ultrasound and see the inside. And then if you push water and air bubbles through the fallopian tubes, you can see the fallopian tubes and that's typically called a fem view and that can be helpful for a tubal evaluation. Another way to check the inside of the uterus and the fallopian tubes is with an x-ray test called an HSG, a hysterosalpingogram. Importantly, a vaginal ultrasound alone is an important part of a fertility evaluation, but it's not the only part of the anatomical evaluation. You will need to have the inside of the uterus and the tubes evaluated. That is usually a little more sensitive around what day of your cycle that test is being done. So it's not quite as easy as just a vaginal ultrasound, but you want to know, are there ultrasound versions at your clinic, saline or fembu, or are you getting an x-ray test for an HSG? There's sometimes patient reasons why I prefer one over the other, but know that both of those tests, so internal uterine anatomy and tubes and a vaginal ultrasound are important for a full anatomical evaluation for your fertility. If you have any questions, please ask them below, share, like, comment, subscribe, appreciate you guys. And you can always get more information on the As Woman podcast or over on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks friends.